Guys, we're in uncharted territory now. I, I don't, the most hype, you know, nonsense cliches that you just constantly hear from commentators and journalists and the whole hype machine. Oh, we're in uncharted territory. Yes, we are always in uncharted territory because no one before, I think today's date is, what is today's date? It is the 12th of January. It is 5.26 p.m. And we, we're in uncharted territory, guys. It's never before been 5.26 p.m. on January 12th in Manly, Australia. Never before, right? Yeah, the world is constantly spinning and rotating. And we're always in uncharted territory because we have never lived this exact moment before, right? No man can step into the same river twice because he's changed and the rivers change. But uh, here's Athenian Stranger on Alex Kashuta's podcast uh, talking about uh, how we're in uncharted territory. How scary is this? But now everyone has seen everything with the way in which you, I mean, you can literally see everything with a, with a quick search on the old Google. Uh, but the danger there and I know the, 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 the sort of the porn reference there is just kind of an analogy, but really it's not even an analogy because sort of the dopamine and all that is the same. But we're in uncharted territory now because when you don't... Yeah, we're in uncharted territory because we've never been in this exact moment before, right? Now, there are things that we have in common with previous moments and things that are brand new. And it's always like that, right? It's always uncharted territory. What I will do is take... I'll take two minutes in that one. You, uh, you could walk this path every day for 10 years and you'd still be in uncharted territory because every day you change and every day the path changes. It's, un it's uncharted territory, guys. The, the thing about the human imagination, uh, and this is something Aristotle says, and I think he's simply correct, and this is also thematic throughout Plato, is that uh, what Aristotle says is you can't even think without images. The, the images that you create in your mind uh, through the faculty of imagination, right? You can't even think. Well, we don't really know how we think. It seems like some people are primarily image thinkers, other people are primarily verbal thinkers. Um, some people see images primarily in, in space. We, we, we just barely know how we think. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sound too assured in your commentary here, mate, Athenian stranger. If, you, if you're always taking in this infinite amount of images elsewhere, you're never really sort of doing the own recombinant work on your end uh, with just... You can't help but do the recombinant work on your end. And you have a choice about how many images you want to take in. You know, some people don't watch TV. Some people don't go to movies. Some people aren't on social media. Right? Most people's lives now, like a thousand years ago, revolve around work, family, community. It's not so radical, and we did not evolve to be gullible. A, a select number of important images. For instance, think about the fact that if you were to only read something like Plutarch, right? Plutarch writes this book called The, Li the Lives of uh, the Great Eminent Degree. So monks, 800 years ago, living in monasteries, right? They were distracted by images. They had a hard time concentrating. It's just part of being human. Because we evolved to be hyper aware for threats. So we, we did not evolve to optimize for happiness. We evolved to optimize for passing on our genes, which means that those who are hyper aware for threats, you know, who disproportionately attuned to fear and anxiety, right? More likely to spot threats coming that would snuff out their lives. And so we're kind of optimized for fear and anxiety, concern and distraction because that's proved to be evolutionarily adaptive. only reason he picks out these particular people is for their greatness, right? Um, Nietzsche picks up on this and says that if I just had a... Oh, he also picked them out because those are the people he knew, those are the people he liked, those are the people he resonated with, those are the people who fit in with his hero system. ...hundred men who had only read Plutarch, I could take over the world. And it's because... Uh, well, guess what? He couldn't. Those men have been educated in greatness, right? What... what what beauty could be at the highest level of human flourishing, human excellence. And unfortunately, 
what we have in this newfound world is very little of that, but an onslaught of literally a veritable flood of mediocre to outright degenerate images uh, that people flood themselves with, right? Anyone who's ever... As soon as like ancient man began painting on a cave wall, he was painting, you know, pornographic images. Alright, so yeah, there are some ways where this moment is uncharted territory different from all moments before it, and there are some ways where it's continuous. Been in any group chat has experienced this. I've had, you know, certainly any woman who's ever been on a dating app has experienced these sorts of things, right? I mean, you're on the receiving end of images that you don't want to see. Uh, and then it's sort of, it's like, oh my God, now I can't unsee it. Uh, and, and, you know, we laugh, we laugh because we realize that there's truth in it, right? And yeah, well, you just walk down the street and you'll see images you don't want to see. You'll see, you know, fat, ugly, frail, deformed, crippled, damaged people. And uh, their pain and their incompetence and their deformity is so painful that uh, it hurts you to look at it. Right? You don't have to go on the internet to see these things. And that's exactly the problem, is when you can't see, unsee some images because they're so extreme of what you don't want in your mind, uh, they pull down all the rest, right? They, they bring you back down, right? They, some people call it realism, like, well, you know. They don't have to, right? You have some agency about where you want your attention to go. Right? You can do things to self-regulate. To adjust your level of fear. Looking at the, the body of a blown up corpse, you know, that should sort of ground you back in reality or something. And, and I mean, yeah, true. But also, if you stay focused on just pictures of uh, images, right, of uh, great leaders, great generals, great heroes, right, really, then you'll even be better off. Uh, and, the, and this gets even really worse when you think about the youth. Because the youth today, and I always tell this to parents, parents, will, parents are amazing at being able to blind themselves to what's really happening in their own house. Um, yeah, if we just, you know, put up pictures of great men, it would totally transform our lives. Well, some people, it would improve their lives. The vast majority of people, it would make very little, if any, difference. Parents will literally think that their kids have not seen porn, or they wouldn't be looking at these kinds of the most outrageous porn. Uh, and I just ask them, I say, well, does your son or your daughter have an iPhone? And, you know, they'll say yes, of course. Uh, and I say, well, it's already in your home. Uh, everything you never want them to see is already in your home. And the thing about the youth is that and this is what makes them so great, right? Is, I mean, it's sort of a double-edged sword. Uh, they have that willingness, to, they're daring, right? They have that sort of, that, that they want to push the envelope, right? And that's a great thing about them. But it can be very dangerous when you combine it with a situation of something like pornography. And then sort of like what you were saying is that uh, they've seen everything. They no longer create their own sort of images. They, they're... And uh, guess what? The world is very dangerous. You know, 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago, there were more wild animals, there were more beasts, uh, there were dangerous snakes. Right? The world's always been a dangerous place. It's not just some brand new phenomenon due to the internet. They're just living out fantasies that they've already seen, probably over in abundance. Other people performing, uh, and they will expect that in their own relationships, right? And so next thing you know, we've got generations of young people now who are already, that's already reality for them. And we don't know what's on the tail end of that, right? We're in America living under the kind of a gerontocracy, right, of old people. You know, we've got this 80-year-old president, you 80-year-old senators, 90-year-old senators, well, they're from a long time ago, right? We don't know what it's like to live under the rule of people like the youth today who have this newfound discovery of, of the most amazing uh, human degeneracy possible. So again, completely uncharted territory. Yeah, everything's uncharted territory. There are some ways that this will be discontinuous with the past, and there will be some ways it will be continuous, but it won't be this you know, radically different environment that you know only people as wise as Alex Kishuta and Athenian Stranger can can detect what's happening. Yeah, we have some new problems today and we have some new advantages today. There are ways that life today is worse than it was yesterday, five years ago, 50 years ago, 500 years ago. There are other ways where life today is better than it was yesterday and 50 years ago and 500 years ago. There are definitely problems. We have uh, you know, new emerging threats that we've not seen before and other threats have diminished. But one thing is for sure, we have optimized evolutionarily to be constantly alert for threats. And life is inherently fragile. That we don't know what's on the other end of it. Uh, it's probably going to be like a present from like a, a grandparent or something where you just don't know what's inside. We don't know what's on the other end of a million things. All right? To be human is to be vulnerable, to work with incomplete knowledge, and to be constantly 
walking into uncharted territory because we are constantly changing and the territory is constantly changing. Right, which you probably, you know, you're probably not going to like it. It's probably not going to really have anything to do with you. Um, and I, I worry about that. And, and that's where, you know, I point to the fact that, again... Yeah, you're not going to like it if you focus on what's bad about this new situation, right? You're not going to like it if you focus on what's terrible about the new environment. You're not going to like it when you focus on how it's inferior to how it used to be. You're not going to like it if you don't have friends and community and family. You're not going to like it if you're not able to self-regulate. Right? If you're able to calm yourself down, if you're able to meditate or pray or exercise or listen to classical music or whatever is your, your process of calming yourself down, then unexpected changes as we enter uncharted territory are going to throw you. But if you're able to self-regulate, if you're able to be a good friend to yourself, if you're able to treat yourself with kindness and care and compassion, if you're able to you know, understand what, what drives and motivates you and troubles you, then uh, there's a really good chance that you're able to do the same for other people and that you'd be a good friend and that you can build up a support system in a community and you can play a valuable role in other people's lives and they can play a valuable role in your life and when these awful things happen like uh, you know, Gen X or Gen Z or Gen Y or whatever takes political power that you'll be able to deal with it. Come on mate. It's probably not going to really have anything to do with you um, and I, I worry about that and, and that's where you know I point to the fact that Yeah he worries about that because he's wiser than you are. And he's just worrying, worrying about that because he sees all these threats that you don't see because he's morally superior. He's cognitively sharper. He has depth and wisdom because he studies the classics. So he's like Eric Weinstein. Right? He's worrying about this and he's worrying about that. Sure hope you're grateful. Again, the best solution, certainly the time. He's like God's suffering servant. He's suffering for our sins. What a mensch. Proven solution to all these things uh, is to really go back to something like the classics, to really reteach people how to set aside time in their daily life, uh, no matter how busy, to take seriously the business of reading good books. Uh, because in a world filled of bad things, of evil people, of monsters, really, uh, you're not going to find the heroes you want looking around you. But we've already seen everyone collect. Unless you're surrounded by good people. You know how you can increase your odds of being surrounded by good people? You can be a good person yourself. How can you be a good person? You can get to know yourself, be a good friend to yourself. When you're in touch with yourself, and what drives you and what frightens you, right? You're much more likely to be able to relate and connect with other people. And you're much more likely to have empathy as you let down your body arming, armoring. You know, when you let go your unnecessary bodily tension, Right? Take some Alexander Technique lessons and you know, let go of habitual reactions to stimuli that aren't serving you and replacing them with more adaptive reactions to stimuli. When you let go of your body armoring, become softer and gentler inside. Uh, you'll open up your heart and your social life uh, to connect with other people and your life will start working a whole lot better. And sure, great books, great. Uh, you can learn a lot from that. You can learn a lot from a lot of different areas, even podcasts and YouTube videos and friends and family. Can you open yourself up to learning where your family's been right and you've been wrong? Can you open up to learning where your friends have been right and you've been wrong? Can you open up to learning from your own experience? Can you, can you milk you know, every defeat and every frustration and every wrong turn you've made you know, to get you know, the full lesson so that you don't just run from your mistakes but you kind of sit there and bathe in them and learn from them and grow and develop from them. Right, there are a lot of ways that you can become a more adaptive human. <laughs>